This episode of The Modern Rogue is brought to you by Into the AM. Super comfortable hoodies, pants, and t-shirts with big, bold, beautiful graphic designs. You're going to feel good, you're going to look good, and you're going to be keeping us in business by clicking on that link below. Get 10% off. Adjacent. Kind of. It's probably fine. I need the dexterity. Science! Adjacent. Hi, and welcome to Science Adjacent, the show that's not science, but it's close. My name is Science. And I'm Jason. Now, some people get a bit confused thinking that the show is called Science and Jason, which would make sense since those are our names. Yeah, but my nickname is Smurfy. F you, Coach <laughs> Beverly. Today, we're talking about microwaves. Jason, what do you know about microwaves? They make great sandwiches. Science. And burritos. And burritos. We. Uh, we got to break character, bro, because <laughs> we're venturing into weird territory. Is... Okay, so I do have one microwave-related magic trick, and I learned it on the radio 30 years ago, like Mr. Microwave, and he gave us helpful tips like, if you want to know whether or not your microwave is leaking, wave a fluorescent tube around it, and if any microwaves are coming out, it'll start to flicker on a fluorescent tube. Same way, like, you could do the same thing over, like, I don't know, those uh, weird science globes. You know what I'm talking about, oh, the yeah, plasma. Uh, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Right, you could do the same thing with microwaves. But he also did this trick. He took cold soda. It's very cold. That's right, here. Right? Okay. Right? Over the radio, I'm hearing this, yeah. right? You're the radio host, so describe oh, everything. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm broadcasting to you using uh, radio waves that are similar to microwaves. You might, you might describe what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Brian is shaking <laughs> up the can of soda, the closed can of soda, and placing it in the microwave right now. Okay, and he put it on for three... Jesus <laughs> Christ! Wait, well, Christmas! You tell me to get away from it and it starts making crazy noises and then you warn me what happened? This is why you don't believe what you hear on the radio. Because what that dude on the radio said was that you could take a soda can and put it in a microwave and it would be fine because the microwaves would bounce off the metal. But in this case, I think what happened was we don't have a glass barrier there. So we have some kind of connection there. That's why we saw the flash or whatever. So in... Uh, Something's smoking. Yeah! Oh, it, it's leaking. There's soda coming out the bottom of the can. Well, that's not great. <laughs> Legend tested. tested. Take that, old radio guy. I think that in the example, there was that glass plate on the bottom and there was no water. Because as I understand microwaves, what they do is they excite water molecules and vibrate them so much that stuff heats up, right? So in this case, the theory was it would bounce off the metal and as a result, the liquid inside would not do anything. But in this case, I guess, why do you think it did that? After about five seconds, it started making that crazy electrical noise like something horrible was gonna happen, right? So I'm thinking, yeah, it started heating up the metal in there and agitating. But that's just it, is microwaves don't heat up metal. They don't? No, they bounce off of metal. They heat up ionized liquids like water and they begin to vibrate. Huh. Like, look at the sides of the microwave. It's yeah. made of metal. So if metal was heated up by microwaves, what would happen if you just ran a microwave? I don't know, let's find out. Okay, let's find out. Okay, <laughs> okay well, well, I'm afraid to get... Uh, uh, do you think that busted open? Oh, or? it did. It definitely did. W when I set it down? No. I, 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 I wear, I wear, I wear, I wear. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. So it looks like some stuff like um, arced, like there was a short circuiting or whatever. Oh yeah, there's so, a scorched mark on the base of the microwave. So what caused that arcing to happen? Oh, you know what? I guess there just wasn't a glass thing separating it from the metal there. So as a result, there was an arc. Oh, it's still going, it's still going. Yeah. It's still going. We're just getting water all over our set with microwaves, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just, uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Take this? Yeah. You got it? 
So I think what happened is that the real experiment is, should be done on a glass surface. This was metal on metal. It arced, it short circuited, and it arc welded and punctured. Look at this. You can see the scorch marks on the side. So it could very well have fused the can to the bottom of the microwave. I bet it did, but with aluminum being so brittle and frail, even if it did fuse it, you would just be able to grab the can yeah. and pluck it right off. But the important thing is that everything in here is still cold. So lesson learned, metal on metal around microwaves, not so great. So maybe we try it again but with the glass insert in there because everything's plastic and we're keeping it off of the metal to metal contact. And then we also clean off all the water. Yeah, I'll dry it up. Okay. So we're having another kid. I'm not entirely sure what to name this one. I'm not even entirely sure how that's possible. I was okay. thinking Shodan. Shodan, oh. And we're know. back. Oh, hi. Welcome back to Science Adjacent. What did we learn, Jason? We learned that it made a really scary noise and we don't need metal on metal. Pretty sure we just invented arc welding, but somebody <laughs> in the comments is gonna correct us. Now we're gonna try an evolved version of the exact same experiment, only using the glass separation I don't know, do you, do you think it's gonna arc weld again? I don't, but I think we're in for something probably terrifying and reckless, Brian. We're gonna be very far on the other side of the blast shield this time. Let's science this. Okay, we did get all of the water off of everything, and we're just gonna put this in here. Here, uh, give a feel, cold, right? Okay. Yeah, very cold, right out of the take. fridge. Okay. Yep. <sighs> How are you feeling? Oh, we don't hear the terrifying noise at all. Well, and we don't see the giant sparks. Yeah. It's obviously not arc welding. Nothing is exploding. Yet. Yeah, I wonder. It's been about 30 seconds, okay. about 20. Do, do you want to? Do you, uh. Don't, don't we have a thermometer or? We got the heat gun. Is it cold? No. Right? Radio guy was right. Vindicated. No. See, it bounced all the way off. So the thing is, don't put metal on metal because that's the reason like when you put a CD in there, it goes Bleh, because it's bridging all of those tiny conductive elements and arc welding everything. Why, should I open it? Yeah. I mean, will it be fine? It's fine. It'll be delicious. Oh, is it gonna give me cancer? I mean, more than they I mean, already do? I was about to say, <laughs> on a long enough timeline. I have consumed all of the base properties of me. No. <laughs> so I feel like we were given a gift here because the thing we really wanted to experience, we just assumed that you don't need the plate for or right. nothing. There was some debate on a video that I watched whether the plate actually absorbs some of the microwave radiation. Some people have said yes, some people have said yes, but very little. So that could have come into play. But like, here's what we know for sure. Ooh, the plate is warm. Here, feel this, feel this. Oh, yeah, yeah, and this is <laughs> still straight out of the fridge. Totally cold, right? Okay, yeah. so I guess in the scenario we just saw, the glass gets excited by some amount of microwave radiation, but it's inefficient. That's why the plate is only warm, and my guess is if we had a bowl of water, all of the water would, would be all crazy bubbling, and as a result, the glass wouldn't have much to work with because the bubbles uh, took all the energy. Seems reasonable. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Legend, Legend examined. Examined. We checked it out. Yeah. That's help. Seems cool. So in this case, we have a straight up beer bottle, hopefully real glass. <laughs> Why would it not be real glass? <laughs> it's sugar glass. <laughs> There's gotta be some amount of humidity or liquid that's in here. I don't know how much there is, but if we pu put it in a similar circumstance, you just wanna, we should get the temperature going. Oh, sure. What do we got? About 77 degrees. Okay, and that's on what? On the bottle itself. And then what about the, the bottom? The bottom, right now it's uh, a little warmer. It's at 90 degrees. Okay, that tracks. So what, maybe 30 seconds? Yeah, go for it, see what happens. 30 seconds. One thing to keep in mind is that the field of radiation is not uniform within the box. Right, which is the whole reason that it rotates on there. So you're able to get kind of the hot spots spread out over all of your food. Okay, so I guess 
let's... <laughs> okay, it was 77 degrees. 98. 98 degrees. And the tray itself, 109. Yeah, the bottle really does feel like, I mean, a oh, little yeah. bit warm, right? It's a little warm, yeah. So I've heard that urban legend that glass is never a solid. It's always a liquid, and that's why old panes of glass are thicker at the bottom. But I've also heard that that was more a artifact of poor glazier technique in the early 1800s or whatever. Well, that's a question for the comments, Brian, but what we know for sure is that glass plate keeps getting warmer at uh, maybe a faster rate than the bottle. Yeah, I think it's just because there's more volume in there, I guess. Mm. And different types of glass. I wish I understood more of the why. Okay. It's time to heat it up. So here we are at the real question, which is an old video that seemed to depict that once you heat it up, glass to an almost liquid state, it would pretty much behave like water and continue to get excited by the microwaves and continue to melt, right? And not the whole glass, a specific spot. The more liquid it got, the more melty it would behave, yeah, right? You, you basically have to kickstart it with a torch. My goal is to get this corner nice and red hot, right? Yeah, you want to get it to be like a red hot quarter. Oh, yep. what's it at? Wow, where you torched it right there, the bottle is reading one, it's 200 degrees. Okay. How about now? 370 degrees. Five, 50, 600. 600? It's still not red hot. 500. Though. Yeah, you gotta get it glowing, man. Let okay, it rip. What's it at? Uh, overload. Overload? It's yeah. a, it has a setting for overload? I don't know. That's what zero L, I, it's freaking out. You can see the color's changing. I think it's about to start melting. It's gonna get red hot soon. Oh, yeah. oh you see it, you can see it. Yeah. It's like in the six, 700 range. It's all over the place. Okay. Okay, so you can definitely see it glowing. Keep it going, keep it going. Get it good, good and red. I'm scared to keep it going. Keep it going, man. Okay, it's definitely glowing. Yeah, we got a good spot in there. All right, let's see if it works at this point. Okay. All right, close it. Start it. It's gonna have to be more than two minutes. You think? I would get all the way behind the blast shield. Oh. Look, it's getting oh. hotter. Holy Oh. Holy oh. Holy oh. That's, That's a lot. That's plasma. Is that plasma? I don't know, but I can't turn it off now. Jeez Louise, it's straight up melting. Oh my God! Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could stop it. Could somebody unplug it from over there? Oh. <laughs> I thought we were gonna be sitting here forever. <laughs> okay. Wow. Legend confirmed. Legend confirmed. Yeah. You that's... can actually melt glass in a microwave. Yes. Okay. We do have a scientific explanation. Yeah, I was about to say, because you wouldn't think that glass being in every microwave would mean that glass could melt in a microwave, but why would it make a lick of difference between a solid glass and a preheated half melty glass? Okay, this is from our consulting scientist, Lowry, out in Australia. Glass bottles are typically soda lime glass, so that when they melt, they form an ionic solution containing sodium ions and calcium ions. This makes it conductive. Similar to when we accidentally arc welded the can to the thing and busted a hole in it, water. Exactly. So the microwave heats the hot spot hotter until it gets hot enough to form a plasma. Some glass is heated for commercial processing by getting it hot enough to conduct electricity, then heated further by passing electrical currents through the glass. Oh wait, this is also a form of arc welding where it's like uh, they'll take something that they need to heat up and they'll heat it up to red hot and then they'll stamp it and then it'll go through the factory like that. Oh wow, well some say that the glass turntable absorbs some of the energy, but to me that seems unlikely. The microwave intensity distribution inside a microwave oven is uneven. The rotation of the glass turntable helps to provide a more or even coverage of the item being heated. In this case, you want an intense single spot so the turntable rotation is counterproductive. Okay, question, can we open it now? Oh, I think so, but definitely. Okay, you ready? Ready. Three hundred and eighty, three hundred and fifty. 
So at this point, we're what you would get in like an oven. So I, f I feel like we could take it out. That Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, you're just gonna grab it. Bold? Yeah. Oh. Ho, ho, ho! There's fractures all over this. Now keep in mind, this could theoretically yep. shatter and explode if the temperature changes too quickly. Yeah. But you could see fractures along the side and you could see the melting on there. And you could see the scream of the 21st Amendment. No, let my booze be free. <laughs> Wow, I did not expect that to work so well. I didn't expect it to work so quickly. I thought we were really gonna be sitting here for 10 minutes while the microwave ran. Yeah, dude, special thanks to our friend, uh, Lari, our pro bono science consultant. That's right. Don't do this at home. This could have gone really wrong. Yeah, dude, this is not science. It's adjacent. I'm science. And I'm Jason. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> do you know the moment I realized I was an adult? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was the moment I started wearing shirts that didn't require people to lean in, squint, and say, oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what I like about Into the AM, is their beautiful, artistic, super comfortable t-shirts. They are the most comfortable. I got this hoodie and Feel it, just feel it. No, I, I, I don't have to. I'm feeling it all over my legs because I've got the pants. Oh, you have the matching pants. Yeah, I finally get to wear something besides shorts next time we do American Ninja stuff. Oh, I'm glad that's been addressed. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> Ever since we got connected with Into the AM, everybody's been rocking their amazing tees, whether it's the plain ones, whether it's the awesome uh, bellies that you're showing. Hey. It, it, I'm telling you, man, they look great. You're going to feel awesome in them. They are quality tees, not like the uh, other cheap ones you might find uh, online. Or they feel personally attacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are super comfortable, soft material, durable, and they've got bundles. Yeah, dude, three graphic tees for 60 bucks and you get an additional 10 percent off if you click on that link down below look fly no 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 <laughs> you're gonna look dope that's fine don't uh, on uh, fleek you know what i'll allow that one is too. that one still a thing i think it's so not a thing that i want it to be a thing okay bring it it's back one of, it's one of those things you could say to annoy your teenage daughters it's streets ahead Ooh. Now I'm learning stuff. Yeah. You know I have a soft spot for any independent creator, and I think that's part of what I love most about Into the AM is that you're not paying some kind of big mega corporation secretly. You're taking care of real artists. Like us. So help us stay in business and help Into the AM by going to intotheam.com, get 10% off, and three graphic tees for $60. Click that link. Offer and link in the description below. And also, the title of the show is not Science and Jason. It's Science Adjacent. No one's ever called me adjacent. It's just Jason. That's although, what my mom says. Although I would love it if everybody started calling him adjacent. That's your new nickname. So let's get to the adjacency. 